So how's the water, hon? Nice and hot, just how I like it. I used to dream about getting hot water from my wood stove without putting any dangerous or ugly pipes into my living space, nor did I want to take any of the heat out of my living space. I just wanted to collect some of that wasted heat that's going out the top of the chimney and put it into my domestic hot water. Talked to a lot of people, they all said it couldn't be done. Well, this is me in 2014 installing this system and it's been working ever since. When I started this project years ago, I searched and searched for information about how to capture the waste heat that's right here. But I couldn't find anything. There was plenty of information about how you could put a coil around the lower part of your chimney and even a coil inside your wood stove, but then I'd be robbing heat out of my living space. Plus the idea of an accident with either glycol or steam in my living space was just not good. So here's some of the information that I wish that I had for you. Sometimes it's helpful to see what doesn't go right. And this is my first attempt. I dug it out of the backyard and uh, let's, let's dissect it a little bit to see what didn't work. Okay. Again, this is my first um, attempt and um, I tried it and um, it failed. So let's see here. I have a um, top cover. This is where the um, switch would be. And that would have gone in here like that on top of here. Okay, so this would have been in here like this. Under here, under here I have some brass pipe that is fitted together with fittings. It looks like I use street elbows, brass, brass pipes to um, help conduct the heat, and some fins, and then below this, I have insulation and what else? What I do? Okay, so this is my my in and out. So my um I made this one so it would just sit on top of the chimney. The one that I have now actually fits inside the um, top piece of the chimney. So this again would be exposed, or it was exposed to the elements. Um, this is a piece of brass or copper that I dug out of someplace. Brass, copper pipe, and uh, brass pipe okay so this you can see here i i soldered this on and this was not enough it really didn't do anything it just wasn't enough surface area okay this is what didn't work this is don't emulate <clears throat> although i kind of like this this is kind of nice <laughs> oh, I made that out of brass. I made this thing a long time ago. So um, let's go over how the new one works. <sighs> Device for capturing the heat. First, let me go over the basic function of how this thing works. So let's say that this is that device that is collecting the heat. It's in the top of the chimney and it has a pipe that goes out and one that comes in. And there is a circulation pump that is going to move that fluid through this pipe. And it is going to go to a heat exchanger that exchanges the heat from the glycol fluid that's in this system to a storage tank that has fresh H2O in it, cold H2O. And it is actually going through half of that heat exchanger. So when you build a fire, you get a ton of heat swooshing up 
and that heat will collect in that top plate through those copper tubes. There is a switch right here on the top. That switch is a heat switch that is um, the same kind of switch that you would use in an electric hot water heater. Now that starts this circulation pump and starts driving that heat, brings some of that heat into that, into that water, transferring it over, and brings it into the top of my hot water heater, which is what we are going for, and gets heated up again and then circulates back through and then it just builds up more and more heat in the top of my hot water tank um, for later use. So as you can see, it is cold outside. It's about 19 degrees. It's in the morning. Got a fire. Shower's running. And down here, it's a big mess. But down here, this is that storage tank, and we're looking at 110 degrees. Now that's not quite as hot as Dot likes it. So right over here, the water comes out of this storage tank, and it runs through this instant hot water heater, and it brings it up to... 125 um, or whatever you set this to and that will take a lot less energy to go from 110 to 125 because she likes it really hot than it would be to go from the well to 125 a lot less energy okay so she doesn't really shower at 125 it's more of a security thing if she's not mixing in some cold water, then in her mind, it's not hot enough and I hear about it. So, after I discovered that this was not gonna be enough surface area to get enough heat to actually make a big enough difference, I started coming up with designs to cast this section in bronze. One of them was a serpentine situation like this. This would be covered up, and this would be a little tube in here, and it would essentially mimic this idea. But um, that really, really wasn't um, enough, and I never actually even tried that one. I came up with a new idea, and this is the pattern that is used for sand casting that uh, is the winning design. I have all these little wedge-shaped pieces, and they get... Um, welded in after this is cast in bronze they get welded in this fin goes through here so each one of these wedges makes a v-shaped chamber that v-shaped chamber gets connected with a loop of pipe all around and then you have your in and out coming in actually i put them on this side coming in and uh, leaving and then the fluid will go in through that pipe to the next chamber, around the point, down through the, the coil, um, into the next one, around and around. As you can imagine, collecting that heat and bringing it down into my domestic hot water. So this design here I've been using since 2014 and I will use until it breaks and um, or I come up with something different. It was working well enough that um, I have other projects that I'm working on that are way more pressing than trying to make this thing work better than it already does because it works pretty well. So the fluid heat exchanger, on the other hand, is working well enough that I'm not gonna change it. But if I were you, I would buy a plate style fluid heat exchanger. Don't get it too big because you want some of the heat to be left in that um, glycol as it's going through your chimney cap because that will decrease the amount of creosote that gets built up. Now my system also includes thermal solar panels that are adding heat to that storage tank whenever the sun is shining on them. Between the two, we've saved thousands of dollars over the years. It's really nice to have a little energy independence and making sure that you have a nice hot shower. 
Soon I'm going to be doing a video about how I tie these thermal solar panels into the same system to share that heat exchanger in the storage hot water tank and also the circulating pumps and so forth. So make sure you subscribe to see that. So this one right here is about how I clean that whole system way up on the chimney. It is a must see before you get too invested in this type of project because it is something that has to happen. Um, so check that one out. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up and hopefully subscribe. Let me know if you have any questions. Thanks and take care.